Do you know any social studies, media, or literature teachers in grades 6 through 12? Encourage them to participate in C-SPAN Student Cam Video Documentary Competition. With the upcoming November election, we're asking young people to address the theme, Your Message to the President. What issue is most important to you or your community? $100,000 in cash prizes will be awarded to students and teachers. To learn more, go to studentcam.org. This week on 2024 Campaign Trail, we're in Asheville, North Carolina, where Democratic vice presidential candidate Governor Tim Walz was campaigning. And in Brooklyn, where second gentleman Doug Emhoff was campaigning with filmmaker Spike Lee. And in Michigan, where Republican vice presidential nominee J.D. Vance was speaking to voters. And in New York, unscripted moments with former President Donald Trump as he was en route to a rally on Long Island. But first, a look at reporting from WCNC-TV in Charlotte on the Republican nominee in North Carolina's gubernatorial race and comments he allegedly made online before his political career. But first, we're learning Republican candidate for governor Mark Robinson will not drop out of the race despite growing pressure this morning. It comes amid a scathing new CNN report showing comments he allegedly made on adult forums and websites more than a decade ago. Robinson quickly denying those claims overnight. Let me reassure you, the things that you will see in that story, those are not the words of Mark Robinson. According to the report, Robinson allegedly referred to himself as a black Nazi and expressed support for reinstating slavery. CNN also claims Robinson said he enjoyed watching transgender pornography and referred to himself as a perv. Now, this morning, Robinson continues, though, to deny these allegations. You know my words, you know my character, and you know that I have been completely transparent in this race and before. And folks, we've seen this type of stuff in the past as well. Clarence Thomas famously once said he was the victim of a high-tech lynching. Well, it looks like Mark Robinson is, too, by a man who refuses to stand on stage and debate me. It's important to note that Robinson allegedly made the comments in 2008 and 2012, long before he entered politics. Robinson first showed up in the public sphere in 2019 after his comments at the Greensboro City Council meeting went viral. He then ran for lieutenant governor and won the following year before announcing his plans to run for governor in 2023. Well, the campaign for Robinson's opponent, Attorney General Josh Stein, released a short statement overnight saying, quote, North Carolinians already know Mark Robinson is completely unfit to be governor. Josh remains focused on winning this campaign so that together we can build a safer, stronger North Carolina for everyone. Overnight, the editorial board for the Raleigh News and Observer newspaper called on Robinson to drop out of the race. However, the state Republican Party is standing behind him this morning. It comes amid concerns that fallout from this report could extend past the governor's race and impact the state's 16 electoral votes. The gubernatorial election, even before this happened, was so contentious that there was a lot of talk that what might happen at the presidential level in North Carolina would be driven by what happened at the governor's race level, which usually it's the other way around. 538's polling average in the Tar Heel state as of Friday had Vice President Harris and former President Trump virtually tied, with the former president taking a tenth of a point lead. Next, some of Minnesota Governor Tim Walz's visit to Asheville, North Carolina, in an attempt to shore up support for the Democratic ticket. What happened when Donald Trump was in power? The very first thing, don't let him forget this, because, you know, they try and rewrite history every day. They try and, you know, alternate facts, new this, whatever. But be very clear, first thing he did, signed an executive order and talked about this, was to repeal the Affordable Care Act. Which protected those of us with pre-existing conditions. Let our children stay on our health care till they were 26. And something, thank God, for you and Roy Cooper, expanding Medicare and Medicaid coverage across the state. But I will say this. On the second one, this is the one thing he kept his word on. And he actually followed through with it. 
He said to his rich buddies, well, you're rich as hell, and I'm going to give you a tax cut. He did. He did give a tax cut to the wealthiest amongst us. All the while creating the largest debt of any president in history. And then as our Republican friends are so apt to do, they tell you government doesn't work, then they get elected and prove it. We know that, we know that shell game. And the third thing he did, and he brags about this often, he forgets about this too. He rammed through three judges who made sure that women are no longer responsible for their own health care choices. And I don't know, he found a little enough energy to do this. He did all that before he tried to violently overthrow our election and deny a free and fair election. We need to be very clear about how we talk about that because he lost the election, and there's no doubt about that. There's, there's no need to have fair and balanced news coverage on that because there is no fair and balanced. He lost the election fair and square. And, and look, my high school students know this, and my players knew this. You play hard, the other team plays hard, and after the game, if you lose, you walk across and shake hands and congratulate the other team. That's the way it works. In politics, you take it another step forward. You walk across and congratulate the winner, and then you pledge to do all you can to help them succeed, because that's good for America. Now, I did teach for a while. I think I'm a pretty good teacher, and I would always give my students extra chances to learn. Sometimes you don't learn the lesson the first time. So Donald Trump did not learn the lesson the first time, but the good news is he's going to learn the lesson in November when he gets to work. But every once in a while, these guys do surprise me. This last weekend, Donald Trump's running mate, Senator Vance, did a really remarkable thing. He got called out by a fair and free press that are a part of our democracy and fundamental to the freedoms of this country. He got called out by that press about telling vicious, hurtful lies about immigrants. But he did something. He did something. He told the truth. They asked him if maybe it was an accident or he didn't mean it. No. He said, I admit it. I'm willing to create stories to spread fear to drum up support for us. Now, now the only thing amongst this group is, is no kidding. We've been seeing that for years. <laughs> That's, yes. But at least they admitted it. At least they admitted it. So you got to ask. What other things are they making up stories about? I think you know. I think you know. The reason you do that is, is because if you told what you really stood for, no one would vote for you. And that includes the folks who think that, because you know you have your neighbors who are out there. Hell, we have them. We have them in our families, don't we know? So, but that's what happens. And they, I don't really like Donald Trump, but I like what he stands for. Oh, really? Suppressing women's reproductive rights? Is that the one you want? Or is it cutting taxes for billionaires while you get screwed in the middle class? Is that the one you like? Or is it ignoring real problems, like our children being shot dead in schools? Is it those things or whatever? So I think for all of us, the truth here, you know who Donald Trump is. You know the pain that he caused. He killed thousands of manufacturing jobs across this state. It doesn't matter how many times he tries to rewrite history. That's a fact, and you know it. Second gentleman Doug Emhoff was also on the campaign trail for the Harris Walls ticket this week. Next, highlights from a fundraiser in Brooklyn, New York, where he spoke along with filmmaker and activist Spike Lee. The pair reportedly raised a half million dollars at the event, where tickets started at $100. So there's a lot of incoming right now. Just It's hard to keep up. Just in the last day or so, we've had some pretty terrible stuff coming our way. Um, you know, the latest hit on Kamala, did you see what they said? And this one is unbelievable. They said that somehow because Cole and Ella aren't Kamala's quote-unquote biological children, that she doesn't have anything in her life to keep her humble. As if keeping women humble, whether you have children or not, is something we should strive for. It is not. But I'll tell you what, going back to that debate, 
Kamala sure kept Trump humble at that debate, didn't she? Because that's what this is really about. And there is nothing, there is nothing more important to me, Kamala, and Kirsten than our kids, our big, beautiful, blended family. But none of this really affects Kamala. Everything just bounces off of her. And I think we should all follow her advice, which she gives to me every single day, which is get back out there, because we got to win. And don't be distracted, because so much of this nonsense is to distract us, because we know what they're really trying to do. It's Dobbs. It's Project 2025. It's spreading hate and trying to pit women against each other, trying to pit us all against each other. That's what they're trying to do here. But I've got news for him. The women in this country are sick and tired of weak men trying to take away their fundamental rights. And then... And then gaslight you about it. We're sick and tired of it. And the women of this country will never humble themselves before Donald Trump. And Kamala makes sure that nobody falls for this constant gaslighting, this constant lying, trying to make us not see what is right in front of our eyes. You saw it yesterday when she took on the sick and dangerous lies that they are making about Haitian migrants in Springfield, Ohio. She called out the little sidekick, J.D. Vance, for his cynical fabrication intentionally designed to terrorize a community. And he knows it's a lie. He's admitted it's a lie, but he doesn't care. So, J.D., J.D. Vance, my goodness. What is his obsession with cats? He's worried about women who own them and makes up stories about people eating them. It's bizarre, J.D. Well, it... It's ex he's an extremist and a misogynist. Let's just call it out. Right now, with what they're trying to do, what's already happening with Dobbs and what they've said they're going to do, we got to be pissed off. And we got to turn that into action. Turn that into action. Get registered and vote. Dougie Doug, we have one of many things in common. The biggest thing is... We're married to two strong sisters. <laughs> anyway, we got to register to vote. And we can't go for the okie doke. You've all seen it. You can't go to three car money. You can't win doing three car money. We, have, we know what's real and what's fake. We can't go for that, for the subterfuge shenanigans, and skullduggery. You can't go for the okie doke We know what it is. And I, I wrote a film called Do the Right Thing. And my brother, Ray Rahim, had love rings. One said love, one said, hey, I didn't make that up. That comes from a film called Night of the Hunter. Robert Mitchum had those things, love and hate, tattooed on his fingers. But I'm in film school. They showed me that. I'm saying I'm using it. <laughs> we cannot go for the okie doke. This thing is going to be close. And you know I'm a big sports fan. And I've seen too many games. I'm not going to name what team's here in New York. <laughs> Where we thought the game was won. Yeah. Until the buzzer, the whistle, is still, is game on. Right. 
We know what this guy does. We do not want to see a motherfucker rerun of January 6th. No rerun. And like my brother Bamba said, usually <laughs> the reruns aren't as good as the first film. So, last thing. We've raised tonight here in the People's Republic of Brooklyn, New York, <laughs> half a million dollars. The past week also brought another apparent assassination attempt on Republican presidential nominee and former President Donald Trump. That prompted a number of politicians, including his running mate, Senator J.D. Vance, to call on higher protection for him as he continued to campaign. Next, some of Senator Vance's remarks on the subject during a campaign stop in Michigan. Before I do that, I, I want to just address the elephant in the room here, which is, of course, just a couple of days ago, my running mate, my dear friend and our next president, was nearly assassinated again. Two assassination tips, attempts in as many months, and I think that it's time to say to the Democrats, to the media, to everybody that has been attacking this man and trying to censor this man for going on 10 years, cut it out or you're going to get somebody killed. Donald Trump ought to have the same detail as Joe Biden. That is a policy choice that our federal government has decided that Donald Trump deserves a lesser level of protection. Maybe with any normal formal pre president, that, that makes sense. It clearly doesn't meet the challenge of what Donald J. Trump is dealing with. So we ought to bump up his security. We, of course, want to be as careful as possible, and we want to make it so that we cut out the ridiculous rhetoric that I think has put a giant target on Donald Trump's back. Now, it, it is, it's, it's, I, I have to say this because, look, all of us, whether we're Republicans, Democrats, or Independents, all of us can do a better job at showing respect, at trying to debate our differences without, you know, going into personal attacks. Former President Trump also addressed the apparent assassination attempt while he was on New York's Long Island. Next, some of a stop he made at a local restaurant while en route to his Nassau County rally. While at the restaurant, he made what's believed to be the first Bitcoin transaction made by a presidential candidate. All right, we're done. Perfect. The yeah. first transaction by a president on the Bitcoin protocol. History. Ooh. You know what that means? Yeah. Yeah. It's history. It's history in the making. Hello, everybody. I got to go back and see those people. Right, let's go. Come on. Right this go. way. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Sir, what's your reaction to the Fed cutting interest rates today? <clears throat> I guess it shows the economy is very bad to cut it by that much. Uh, assuming they're not just playing politics, the uh, economy would be very bad, or they're playing politics, one or the other. But it was a big cut. Mr. President, any reaction to the Teamsters decision not to endorse? No, they were. I, it's a great honor. They're uh, not going to endorse the Democrats. That's a big thing. And this is the first time in, I guess, 50, 60 years that that's happened. Democrats automatically have the Teamsters. Uh, they took a vote, and I guess I was at 60 percent or more, and uh, that's a great honor. I mean, it's really — I've had a lot of Teamsters work for me, a lot of the concrete trucks that mm -hmm. built all these buildings that you see in New York City, the Teamsters, uh, exclusively Teamsters, I have to say, and they've done a great job. But the vote of the Teamsters themselves was very high for me, and uh, the leadership, uh, Sean O'Brien and the group, who are great people, they said, we can't endorse the Democrats. So I think this is the first time in many decades that they haven't endorsed Democrats. Right. Big, 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 difference, big difference in those big industrial states, you think? Are they going to make a difference? I think it will, yeah. I think so. The Teamsters carry a lot of weight. Uh, 
the Democrats cannot believe they didn't. You know, look, this is uh, — it was always automatic that Democrats get the Teamsters, and uh, they said we won't endorse uh, the Democrats this year. So that was an honor for me. Mr. Trump, there's a lot of concern about your vulnerability as you, as you golf. Are you going to continue to golf? And have you talked with the Secret Service about upping Well, we'll security? look at it, and we'll do what the Secret Service wants. Uh, you, you don't want to ever uh, be curtailed because of — you know, the crazy people out there, the bad people, crazy people, whatever you want to call them. Uh, so we'll let the Secret Service determine that. If they think things are safe, you do it. Like coming to a place like this, uh, it's got to be safe. It's got to be safe. We're going now to Nassau Coliseum where, I mean, it's literally been packed. It's been, you know, incredible. They have over 60,000 people for 15 or 16,000 seats. So I look forward to that. But it's always got to be safe. We got some great. You Bitcoiners. just don't want them dictating to you where you should go and what you should. Do you feel kind of hemmed in by the, the by all the news? No, I don't. I really don't. I, I just have to lead my life and I have to make America great again. That's what it's all about. Sir, Sir. 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 Biological children. Do you think that that's something that about Harris, who? Um, Governor Sanders yesterday had a dig about Harris not having biological children? She's a stepmother but doesn't have biological <laughs> children. Do you think that's something she should be attacked for? Well, I just don't know anything about it. Really. Thank you. First transaction, right? It's amazing. Thank you for that. Thank you. If you can guide him this way. Oh, 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 boy, is he making a name for himself. Huh? Yeah. Oh, I like that. Hello. President Trump, what, what year? Nice to see you. It's been a while, huh? Uh, do you feel safe, Mr. President? Are you looking at any private security in addition? I feel very safe. I have the top of the line people. They needed more people, and now they have them. They've been given that. And uh, I guess it's a presidential level. And based on uh, the poll numbers, I guess you have to do that. We're leading in just about every poll, and we have to be safe. But uh, we really have to be safe for the country. That's the most important thing to me. We have to be safe for the country. A lot of progress is going to be made. It's going to be made fast. But uh, the Secret Service, I think they're doing a very good job. They just needed more people. And what's your message? And they've been giving. What's your message for New York? Uh, I love New York. I always love New York. And we're going to give New York a big play. You know, I leave here. I mean, you see the crowds, and it's so friendly. I love New York. Uh, but New York has a lot of problems, and we're going to make New York great again also. We're going to bring it back. And we're going to hopefully win. We, we, I think we have a real chance of winning with hundreds of thousands of people coming from prisons and jails and from mental institutions and dumped into New York. The people don't want that. And we'll work with your mayor and your governor, and we're going to do a lot of great things for New York. We want to do that, and we have to bring it back. We can't let this happen to New York. So unfair to have hundreds of thousands of people dumped into the city and the state. You just can't do that. Nothing, no, no place can sustain that. Would that mean a lot to you since it's your home state? To win well, New York? I'd love to win New York. It hasn't been won in many, many decades by a Republican, but uh, this time it should be won by a, This is a Republican that loves it, that lived here for many, many years. And, um, you know, I'm all about New York. We have to bring New York back, and we're going to. We hopefully, we're going to win New York. I mean, we're here because we want to win New York. Thank you. Mr. President, you want to take some notes? Yeah. You want to have it. Thank you. These suckers are good, too. <laughs> they make them good here. Here we go. Yeah. This is a crypto burger. <laughs> actually, actually, you should name them. Name a Bitcoin and a crypto. <laughs> We've got plenty of them you can name. Okay? I think you're going to be in good shape back there. Glass bottle of Coke. Do you want one? Huh? Do you want one? Go ahead, take it. She's allowed to take it. She's been great. Okay, guys? I just think Greg Gutfeld, you have to watch it tonight. Greg Gut. How many people were there? Doug, you were there? Yeah. That's cool, right? Yep. He's done a good job. Does everyone know Pulitzer Prize winner? Doug is one of the greats. Look at him. He's embarrassed. embarrassed. Okay, here you go. Doug, you're great. You gonna have one? He always he makes me look thin, that's all I care. Yeah. Got it? Have a good time everybody.
Thank you. We're going now to Nassau Coliseum. Safe travels. Packed house. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Do you have a connection to the wireless device explosions in Lebanon? I think it's crazy. I've never seen anything like it. Nobody has. When he's 21, he should come here. When he's 21. This was held behind um, Janet Yellen when she was the chair of the Federal Reserve. Oh, <laughs> Christian was an intern at the Cato Institute. He was probably fired before he left the room. <laughs> wow, that was a big deal. Check it out. But, you know, Bitcoin's come a long way since then. You've come a long way. Nice to meet you, Mr. Yeah, keep that. Mr. Yeah, President, right. are you going to meet with Zelensky when he's here next week? Uh, anyway? Probably, yes. Next, a look at part of this week's Washington gubernatorial debate between Democratic nominee Bob Ferguson, the state's current attorney general, and the Republican nominee, former Congressman Dave Reichert. The two addressed a number of topics at a debate hosted by the Association of Washington Business. Okay, tonight, uh, Bob is asking you to believe that he will change the way he's done business for the last 12 years. That's not going to happen. We know that. It's not going to change. He says he's the change agent. That's not going to happen. I am asking you to believe that together we can make change in Washington State. A Democrat House, a Democrat Senate, working together with, yes, a Republican governor, balanced government, we can do this together. That's the change agent. That's the change agent. A balanced government in Washington state, mind-blowing. Right? We can do this. And what we'll work toward is a government based on leadership, on integrity. Imagine an honest government, a government based on servanthood, and on a, on, on a team that's built on servanthood and integrity. I want to work with you to build that kind of government. We can lead the country. We can show the country what it means for a divided state like Washington State to come together to fix what's broken, change what's wrong, and do what's right. Mr. Ferguson, 90 seconds. So you've had a chance to hear two very different visions for the future of the state of Washington, reproductive freedom. He opposed it. I support it. Dave, you went back to Congress. Dave, you went back to Congress and voted dozens of times to repeal the Affordable Care Act. If you're someone watching with a pre-existing condition, he was going to take away your protections for that pre-existing condition. He was going to jack up your prescription drug prices if you're a senior. I was proud to defend the Affordable Care Act when that case went to court. Look, I have never been satisfied with the status quo. When I first ran for the King County Council, when I first ran, I took on a 20-year incumbent who happened to be a Democrat and the chair of that county council. I had no support from Democrats, no elected officials, but I won that campaign with a grassroots operation. As an attorney general, I've taken on the Obama administration and the Biden administration to stand up for workers and your reproductive freedom in one time after time. As your governor, we're going to make public safety a top priority. We're going to hire more law enforcement officers. You're paying too much in housing. You're paying too much in groceries. We're going to change that when I'm your governor. We're going to invest in more apprenticeship and workforce training. My family's been in the state for five generations. I'm looking forward to watching this debate with my teenage kids and my wife calling a little bit later on. But this campaign's not about my family. 
It's about yours. I will defend your freedoms, and I'll advocate for you each and every day if I'm elected governor. Thank you very much. In the latest polling of the Washington state gubernatorial race, Democrat Bob Ferguson is up 11 points over the Republican nominee, former Congressman Dave Reichert. Last, a look at ads the two candidates have been running in Washington state over recent weeks. I grew up in a big family. My mom was a public school special education teacher and my dad worked at Boeing. They were always around for us. It's harder than ever for families to do the same. Skyrocketing costs and rising crime are making times really tough. I'm running for governor so families have an easier time making ends meet. And our loved ones, like Jack and Katie, have a safe and secure future. I'll work to lower costs, invest in technical education and apprenticeships, and I'll hire more police officers so we combat crime, improve public safety, and get those in crisis the care they need. It won't be easy, but I've never been satisfied with the status quo. I refuse contributions from big corporations, so my focus will be getting things done for Washington, not powerful interests. Together, we'll make our state safer and more affordable so we can all spend more time with our families and build a stronger future for everyone. Bob Ferguson for governor. What do Dave Reichert and I have in common? Saving lives. He stopped human traffickers and men who beat women. When my friends say they trust Dave with their lives, they can. Dave has risked his life protecting women. And children, too. No one is saying that about his opponent. Dave Reichert for governor. A reminder, this program and all of C-SPAN's campaign 2024 coverage can be found online at cspan.org slash campaign.